Hey everyone, Bill Puckett coming to you live from General Butler State Resort Park. I'm walking the trail again, the same trail that I've walked a lot called the Fossil Trail, 4.5 miles. Um, did I already say the date? April 2nd. 2019 it's a beautiful day beautiful beautiful uh 50 ish degrees temperature trees are starting or bushes are starting to bud trails not grown up of course just beautiful beautiful weather i'm walking leisurely today not going going fast uh, I'm going to share some childhood memories with you. Not sure what I'll call this. Maybe child, Bill's childhood memories. But, uh, so my brother, Glenn, is two years older than me. So, and we lived on a road called Highway 55 from the time I was about seven years of age till I got married, which was about 20 years of age. And uh, we had terrain in our backyard, very similar to this, rolling Kentucky hills, trails that we had created, me and my brother and our friends. Um, and we had a creek in our front yard, a uh, typical Kentucky Creek, lots of things to do down there. But, so with my brother being only, this is a little, sorry, interrupt. There's a little pond right here in the middle of the trail. One of the things my brother and I would do no matter the weather, it didn't matter. It didn't matter if it was raining. It didn't matter if it was uh, snowing. It didn't matter if it was zero degrees outside. It didn't matter if it was 100 degrees outside. We were outside and on the trails, either up in the hillside or playing in the creek every day, all year long, every day. That's all we did. So, Cowboys and Indians was a big game we would play. We would get, of course, we would play Army out here. We'd get some camouflage gear, green and browns and play for hours outside. And we had these strange people down the road that nobody has anymore. They're called neighbors. And these neighbors had kids. It's weird, I know, very strange. But these kids, would come outside and play too. And they were about our age. And we'd go on them hillsides and we would uh, climb them hills. I was probably very much in shape around 12, 13, 14 years of age because I climbed them hills all the time, every day. And we would borrow steel or just take our dad's tools our poor dad he couldn't have a tool we'd take his hacksaws we'd take his saws his hatchets hammers anything that would cut and we were up in them hills nailing boards on the sides of trees climbing trees, sawing down 
what uh, I would call a grapevine and swinging on them for hours on end. I'll show you a grapevine here in just a, a minute, but they're all over these Kentucky hillsides. So the grapevine grows up the tree somehow or another. I have no idea how it does it. Maybe it grows with the tree because it's usually attached inside of the tree. I'll show you one here. So, see this tree here? Here, this is the grapevine here. And it goes all the way down to the ground and roots. And of course, there's the base of the tree. We would cut the end of that grapevine off and of course we're in Kentucky, we would swing out these hillsides all the time and do that for days on end until the grapevine would break. As a matter of fact, I can remember a fella that would have been a couple of years older than me uh, and bigger than me, swinging out one on one and uh, the grapevine breaking and of course he tumbles down head first and breaks his collarbone. It was a great big adventure that day. We got to run back home and I don't remember the details. I just knew he broke his collarbone by swinging on a grapevine. And we put ropes up in trees and swing from them all day long. And we would do things like find rocks such as this right here and you can't tell the the steepness of this hillside but if that rock was even just a little bit round it would roll and we would roll them rocks down the hills at one another and uh, it's a thousand wonders number one <laughs> Now I understand how much momentum those big rocks, I'm talking we pick up, get big rocks up on their sides and start them down them hills. It's a thousand wonders we didn't crash some of them rocks through the houses at the base of the hill. But teenage boys don't think about stuff like that. We just think about, I'm wanting to try to kill that guy down on the hillside, the bottom lower lower side so just stuff like that all the time building forts uh, killing snakes killing birds I I hate the thought that how many of how many birds I killed we had wars with BB guns and uh, it was a bloodbath but it was fun was no video games. Maybe there was a video game. Maybe we had like a little Atari and a, something like a Pong in my later years. That became the, I don't know. It just, things are different. So we would build things like this, which I have no clue what that is. Those racks, rocks did not get stacked there. Uh, by nature someone stacked them so we would build forts and no telling how long those have been there I'm talking big rocks we would roll down the hills like this there's my foot for dimension but it was good fun super super duper good fun and I miss those times I think kids are uh, missing out they're missing out big time by uh, getting their childhood robbed, and it's a shame. But they'll come around. They always do. Nothing is new under the sun, right? There's always something to distract. So nature's still here waiting on them. I just wish they'd hurry up. So, because 
it's really where I learned a good many skills. I learned to saw, I learned to camp, I learned to hammer, I learned to hike, fish, hunt, all of that stuff just by getting out there and doing it, playing around every single day. That's what we need to go back to. Every single day. Too much to sit in entertainment these days. Way too much. Just my opinion. All right, I'll end with that. Just some, I could go into great detail on some of the memories, but that's enough for now. Maybe I'll write something out here too long. Talk to y'all later.